Hi, welcome back to the Chamber of Spoilers. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a grad student, book reviewer, and I make YouTube videos sometimes. Thanks for tuning in. So, book Twitter doesn't sleep, <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about Lauren Hugh. How? Hugh. I'm going to go with Hugh. God, white names are so confusing sometimes. I can't believe anybody knows how to pronounce them. You might have seen some of the fracas on your timeline, but I'm going to give you a summary of what happened, the main players, and what's wrong with this picture. Who is Lauren Hugh? Lauren Hugh is a debut author whose memoir has just been released. The book is about her experience leaving a cult, and as such, it is deeply personal. She's also a lesbian and white, which I'll get into later. So, what happened? Lauren broke the cardinal rule of writers everywhere. Don't read their reviews. Obviously, some writers read reviews and some have a trusted friend go and pull constructive or positive reviews for them to read. Lauren went on Goodreads, and she found a review she was upset by. So Lauren took a screenshot of two reviewers who said they loved it. 4.5, rounding up. I gave it a 4.5, but round it down. Glad to see most of the Goodreads assholes still giving four-star reviews to show that they're super tough reviewers who need to, like, fall in love, you know? Anyway, no one likes you. Grow up. All the writers scared to even like that tweet. I see you. I will hate them out loud for you. I know they're scary as shit. Fucking nerds on a power trip. You forgot to assign homework, motherfuckers. There's a really great Twitter thread that actually accumulates all of these bad takes uh, from Lauren Hugh, who, uh, spoiler alert, it's downhill from here. She screenshotted another thing, community ratings and reviews on Goodreads. I love how proud y'all are of this relationship that basically equates to shut up and take it. Don't make eye contact and we won't hurt you because we love books. I'll link to this thread because it's bananas. A number of her stands are calling people assholes for not rating her book five stars if they liked it. I'll get into that too. She then goes on to compare her actions of calling out reviewers. She compares calling them out and not apologizing to rape culture. You shouldn't have worn that skirt. Attacking small reviewers and then receiving negative feedback to that when you don't apologize is rape culture. Sure, Jan. And then somebody asked her, are you comparing Twitter drama about book reviews to being raped and victim blamed? She goes, yep. So somebody very uh, reasonably said, yeah, let's not compare your book getting bad reviews to women being assaulted. You went out of your way to be nasty to a reviewer who gave your book a 4.5 star review. I don't agree with people giving your book bad reviews, but your analogy isn't anywhere close to being relevant. And then Lauren said, I'll decide what's relevant. Wow, that's not abuser language at all. <laughs> Victim blaming language is rape culture and it's fucking relevant when the only writers this ever happens to are women. So she continues to double down on this saying, this is what's happening here. She is literally comparing rape to a bad book review. Not even a bad book review, a book review of like above average, I would say. If I didn't know that her life had been difficult, I would say that she'd never faced adversity because she is being so incredibly fucking petty. And I don't know what happens now. Goodreads is just letting it happen. Thousands of people bragging they won't read the book. TikTok videos of the hilarity that is murdering my one goddamn dream. Insta posts about my being problematic. It's triggering as fuck. I mean, for fuck's sake, I just put out a book about being silenced. Fucking tortured for not smiling enough, not being grateful for that torture. I hoped, I really fucking hoped that being a writer meant I could speak again. Finally, and here we are again. Thing is, she's not being silenced. She's experiencing consequences for being a dick. I find this really frustrating. People who are in a position of power, she has a really big book contract. She has a huge book coming out. People are endorsing her left and right, and she is claiming to be being silenced. Um, people not liking you because of a bad thing you did isn't being silenced. You still have a platform. You have an incredible platform. And you know how I can tell it's because people are liking your fucking tweets. So you're not being silenced. You're experiencing consequences. White's a bunch of self-appointed vigilantes destroying someone's life work because she didn't smile. She's basically saying that people are being angry at her and targeting her because she didn't smile. It, I don't think it's asking that much to not attack strangers on the internet especially when you have a huge platform. They, and this is the funniest part, think I blamed being stoned. What I did was think aloud about how arbitrary all this shit is. The ratings. Is a 4.5 a 4 or a 5? Who gives a shit? Clearly you do, ma'am. <laughs> the ratings. Is it a 4.5 or a 4 or a 5? Who gives a shit? And how fucked it is that they can destroy someone's book before it even gets a chance to breathe. That's not true. You have an, you have an endorsement from Roxanne Gay. People are defending you all over the internet. About 50 randos online got a little angry at you. Pace yourself, woman. So then she defends herself by saying, I was exhausted and am. I was excited and fucking terrified. My book was coming out in the morning. I was stoned and I threw up a bunch of half-formed expletive-laden thoughts thinking like I do that I was talking to a wall. This is infuriating because she knows she has a platform. She knows she's talking to people. She just didn't think she'd get caught. She didn't think anyone would care. If you have 66,000 followers, you know that people are going to read your tweets and respond to them. That's just gonna happen. So you didn't think you were talking to a wall. You thought that the people you were talking to would all be on your side and not care about your shitty behavior. They think I was mad about a four-star review. 
They're saying I threw a temper tantrum, but a fucking four star review. They're saying posting a screenshot of the review in my feed was doxing. I'd like to know what they think the internet is. Clearly she was mad about the review. She was angry about it and she blamed book reviewers at large for being garbage. You know, it's nice. That's a really nice thing to say. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And also like when you have that kind of platform, any call out of somebody lower than you is doxing is especially when people are attacking these people and are going after them. And your fans who you know love, lo are loyal to you and support you are going to go after these people. And then there's just a bunch of people asking her to like be clear and she's just telling them to eat shit over and over again, which is a lot. And now apparently she seems to have gotten the idea. The rule is don't respond. Someone way back called it don't feed the trolls. And it's true generally. I tried, I really fucking did. Hired the front to block people, kept my mouth shut, but it's my book they're trying to destroy. My fucking soul is in that book. So if you're not a reviewer or an extremely online person, you might not see a problem, at least with the first couple tweets. Just to give some context, Lauren is an author with a big book coming out. She's being published by a big house and probably had a really big advance. Despite any marginalization she might face as a queer woman, she's a person with power. She has a lot of Twitter followers. So when she attacks a rando online, it's punching down. She's also just being really shitty to the book blogger community, many of whom, like me, don't do it to get paid. I have some writing gigs where I get like, a couple bucks and it's definitely not worth the time that I put into it. I do it out of love. Um, I don't get paid for most of my reviews. My blog makes a couple cents a month. Uh, my YouTube channel is not yet monetized. I am not in it for the big bucks. I am not the New York Times. I am not powerful. I think six books over the course of like the last four years that I've been blogging, maybe someone will have bought them. Maybe I will have influenced somebody to check out a library book. Yeah, I'm the fucking Illuminati. What I'm trying to say is that book bloggers are not powerful in the way that she's saying they are. We do have some degree of influence because we put a lot of work into what we do. I don't review every book that I read, I would die, but I do review books that I really like or books that I think are really problematic and I review some that are in the middle. But the idea is that book bloggers are doing a service to other readers and we're doing it out of love and out of the goodness of our hearts and also sometimes for some free books. There's also this like hierarchy of power that I wanted to get into. Like for example, you wouldn't put Lauren Hume on the same level as J.K. Rowling. And for a long time, I would say J.K. Rowling was the most influential writer in the world, at least in English. That's changed now for a variety of reasons I won't get into. If J.K. Rowling were to pick a fight with Lauren Hume, that would be punching down. If J.K. Rowling were to pick a fight with James Patterson, I wouldn't have a problem with that. They're about the same level for me in terms of like world influence. In this case, she's just attacking random people who she finds objectionable, not because they're doing anything even wrong. Like if they were calling her slurs, I would kind of get it. They liked her book and she was upset. Another thing that I'm seeing here is people talking about Lauren's mental health, which I'm sympathetic to. I can understand this must've been super traumatic for her. It has to be very difficult to see work that you really care about, work that's very vulnerable, being lambasted by people who haven't read it. But here's the thing, if you're going to engage online with people talking about your book, you're going to have to be prepared for people not liking it. And if you can't do that, you need to step away. A lot of authors have talked about this on Twitter in the last couple days, kind of like quietly subtweeting Lauren, which I appreciate. Reviews are not about you. Reviews are about the quality of the book, what kind of book it is, if it's how it's marketed. Reviews are about, are you going to enjoy reading this book? If you can't handle seeing people criticize your work, you shouldn't read reviews. And if you don't have the mental health awareness to understand that, that is not anyone else's fault. Lauren getting triggered by this is nobody's fault. She is deluding herself if she thought that all of the reviews would be 100% perfect. No book has 100% perfect reviews, ever. No book has nobody coming after it because they didn't like something in it. Every book has criticism. And so you cannot tell me that she was not searching for something to hurt herself with. And that's digital self-harm. She needed to have a self-awareness that she couldn't handle it. And that is not her fault that she got triggered. It's not her fault that she was hurt by this. It's not anyone's fault. It is Lauren needing help. You need to be responsible for your own behavior when you have a public platform. I have my meltdowns offline and it's much preferable. I also brought up Lauren's whiteness earlier because no writer of color would be shown this amount of grace as another Twitter user brought up. This is really a show of white privilege because she's so clearly uncaring about anybody else's real opinions. All she wants is to have her ass kissed and that's pretty sad. So of course, once she was getting some negative feedback about this, a bunch of other writers got very scared. Oh, poor babies. Emily Van Dunn. I stopped using Goodreads 10 years ago, but I went to their site today to see what was happening with Lauren DeHue and I'm horrified. Goodreads is trash. Lauren DeHue is hilarious and smart. I bought her book. You should too. I'll get to my thoughts on that, but it's 
really weird to see people defending her about this and being like, people reviewing her book as one star without even reading it is terrible. When um, you're not taking into full context the fact that she just attacked somebody. Like the reason this is happening to her is because she attacked somebody. Unprovoked, they didn't tag her in their 4.5 star review. They didn't email her. They haven't done anything wrong except exist on the internet. And Lauren, he was the victim apparently. Roxane Gay, who uh, gave this book a blurb, did not withdraw her support saying, what does that have to do with me? It's a great book. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm not the hall monitor. This is kind of dismissive, um, but I kind of understand it. Black writers and black women specifically get asked to clean up after white colleagues a lot of the time and that's not fair. I do think it's shitty of her to not pull her support now when Lauren is still having a public meltdown about this. It's pretty sad. It shows that she just does not care about reviewers. And I mean, I don't know Roxanne personally, I don't know her opinion about this, but early on when it wasn't clear what was going on, sure, at this point when we know that Lauren is harassing people, there's no excuse. Some really great authors, but mostly in niche fiction, like romance, uh, like Courtney Milan have talked about how they don't read reviews and how this is childish behavior. I appreciate this. I do wish authors who were in the same kind of genre bucket of the lit fic and the memoir fiction would come out and say this is unacceptable because it is. I would say I was most disappointed in Stephanie Land, whose book I really enjoyed and who I really respected up until this point. My friends keep asking me how I feel about what's happening with Lauren the Hue, and I honestly say that I support any marginalized writer who shares their story. It's fucking hard. People are brutal. I know that personally. It's hard to defend your truths while readers and some who didn't read it question your experience, they question your actions, they question your decisions. But nobody realizes how difficult it is. People say you should be happy all the time. You should be grateful. You can't speak to how traumatic and scary it is. Lauren is being honest. She's being herself. Honestly, I admire that. It's something I could never feel safe doing. Death threats and punching down for the sake of character are not okay. You want to have discussion about the book? Great. But don't get into a mean girl roundup about character. That's not up for debate. Read the words, then decide. So I responded to this because I was incensed. I was really upset. I assumed that maybe Stephanie wasn't aware of the full context of the situation. Maybe she just didn't know what was going on. So I responded. This is sad for me to read. She attacked someone who liked her book for not giving her five stars. Reviewers owe you nothing. Not a high rating, not a nice review, nothing. She's punching down and it's sickening. That is why people are responding this way. And then Stephanie replied, she didn't punch down. She pointed out that it's silly to say you give it a 4.5 but rounded down. Someone responded with screenshots and Stephanie did not respond. I guess what's really frustrating about this is just the complete lack of interest in protecting reviewers. And this is kind of where I get into my personal frustration. Reviewers owe you nothing, as I said in my tweet. If you send a reviewer a copy of your book, we don't owe you even a review. We don't owe you an email. We don't owe you a thank you. We don't owe you anything. A reviewer is not doing this for payment, is not doing this for thanks, is not doing this for you. A reviewer does this because that's what they want to do or because they have a community that they love and support. Reviewers do not owe authors anything. Reviewers don't owe audiences anything. Reviewers owe you nothing, basically. It's not in my personal code of ethics to review a book that I haven't read. I don't ever want to write a review unless I've read something cover to cover, but if people want to rate it one star and they haven't read it because of your fucking attitude, that's their prerogative. Congratulations, you've earned it in my opinion. That is up to them. People can do that if they want, just as people can buy your book if they, if they want, and they have. Part of being a reviewer is reading books that you don't like and saying you don't like them. Stephanie also got kind of petty on this thread. Uh, somebody commented saying she also singled someone out rounding up in the same exact tweet. Maybe she has something against rounding in general, but you're not representing facts accurately. And Stephanie replied, maybe a hobby would be beneficial. Maybe you should get off Twitter, Stephanie. <laughs> and somebody made a really good point that I really appreciated. Attacking a random non-professional reviewer on her public platform is punching down and it's petty to boot. It feels like some hand-waving to pretend a rando on Goodreads has the same reach as Hugh or that Hugh's actions are benign or okay. And she responded, sounds like jealousy. That's just such a non-reply. Somebody responded to all of this saying, no one is entitled to call on their ultra niche, though incredibly influential book reviewers, Cruz, to bomb a vulnerable person in their most vulnerable state regarding the most vulnerable thing they've ever done either. It is gross that unverified reviewers have that much power. First of all, unverified reviewers. I don't think anyone at any point asked me to present my social security number. I was never ID'd. Nobody took my blood. Nobody asked for my bona fides. I don't need your approval to write silly things about books that I like. Somebody who um, has a really weird idea of how book reviewing works said, so you got all your minions to gang up and falsify ratings on a book you haven't read? Who do you think you are? <laughs> and like, frankly, it's adorable that they think we have minions. Like there's this cabal of reviewers sending flying monkeys to one star author. Like what kind of free time do you think we have? This is my free time. I have a full-time job and I'm in grad school. <laughs> 
now on to Lauren's history. Uh, she apparently has a history of harassing people on Twitter. Another writer tweeted, so is now the time to talk about how that one writer made an entire thread claiming I was lying about being gay or... Apparently, Lauren Hugh has a history of gatekeeping the gay community. That's cool. I hope my eye look is neutral enough for her. I wouldn't want to look too femme and get kicked out of the queer club. Another user, Cora Harrington. Is the Lauren Hugh being dragged today the same Lauren that was out here gatekeeping who gets to call themselves gay back in 2019 and basically erasing femme lesbian identity? That Lauren? Because I haven't forgotten. And now that Lauren, who had no problem criticizing someone who she thought wasn't gay enough, is now having some issues with being criticized? That Lauren? My, my, look how the tables turn when you do the fuckery and the fuckery comes back to bite. Gatekeeping gay spaces is not great. I don't love that. <laughs> Especially considering like, when you see her harassing people who have less power than her, and you see this, I wouldn't be surprised if more stuff comes out because we're seeing a pattern of behavior. Ultimately, however, she got what she wanted. Hey, don't tweet at Lauren Hugh. Don't engage. She's intentionally doing this to get purchases from OMG cancel culture crowd and it's working. Block and move on. This is like shitty person making money on social media one-on-one because inevitably if you get talked about, you'll buy your work. Best seller rank. Number 252 in books. One number one in computers and internet humor. Number one in religious cults, books. Number two in LGBTQ biographies, books. Customer reviews, 4.5 stars. This is another instance where like, is me making a video about it bringing more attention to the situation or is it telling people what's actually happening? I veer toward the latter because I think it's important people know. Somebody might see the book and think, oh, this is an interesting memoir. And the author is clearly a bully, which is unacceptable. Um, she will only gain more power. I have no illusions about this stopping her. She's doing really well. Her book was gonna be big before. It'll be big now. It'll probably be bigger now. She's stoked this. She's parlayed this into an NPR interview. Lauren's gonna be fine. She'll be better than fine. She'll be great. And that's really sad because she got here harassing people and it appears that she's done it in the past and it doesn't look like things are gonna get any better. So that's sad. I hope people searching her name on YouTube will find this video and realize they don't want to support her. If you absolutely have to read her book, I don't know what to tell you, I'm not going to read it. It really does seem like my kind of thing though, because I really loved Educated, I loved Made, I loved books that kind of feel like this title, and I would normally buy them or get them from my library, but like, why would I want to support someone who does this? I don't. So I won't. Thanks for watching this incredibly late video on Twitter drama. If you're interested in more videos like this, subscribe, like, comment, share. I appreciate it. If you're one of Lauren Hughes' flying monkeys, please comment and uh, put a little monkey emoji. I really appreciate that. If you're Lauren Hughes searching your name on YouTube because you want to hurt yourself, I'm sorry, get some more therapy. Thank you for watching. See you next time.